Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you're very welcome to this long-awaited orchid update. So in this video I have a variety of orchids to share with you. I have some amazing oncidiums, one in particular which is going to blow your socks off and I have some cattleyas in bloom. But before we start the video I want to mention one thing and that's relating to the book I published a while ago. Now it's an e-booklet and it's called My Windowsill Monsters and it's all about growing cattleyas on a windowsill in the temperate zone which is exactly what I do. And the good news is that normally you could buy this book for five dollars but it is free to anybody who signs up to memberships for a limited time period. So go and Click the join button on my channel and you will see what you would get if you signed up for memberships, what other perks are in there, including specialised videos and a plant video diary, which is currently being added to daily for members only, and some other things, including seeds. So go check that out. And if you were thinking of buying a copy of the booklet, then why not sign up to memberships for one month, have a look, and you won't have lost any money. It's the same price. Okay, right, so having gotten that out of the way, let's get on with the video and let's kick off by having a look at some of my Oncidium orchids. Okay. You are very welcome to this orchid update video and if you hear background noise well that's going to be the storm that's raging outside. We're going to escape from all that and have a look at my orchids starting off with the Oncidium Alliance and this gorgeous gorgeous yellow Oncidium that is well just coming to the end of its flowering. I bet you're wondering why I've started with the Oncidium Alliance. And to tell the truth, the most glorious thing I have to show you today is in that alliance. So we're going to get to it as quickly as possible. But for the moment, we're looking at Oncidium honeybee, a beautiful hybrid that I got a year and a half ago. Now this type of Oncidium is generally referred to as dancing ladies. And I think we can see very well from the shape of the flowers. Doesn't it look like this is a beautiful dress and the lady has got her hands up in the air ready to kind of gallivant in some very enthusiastic dancing. In any case it's a very nice orchid and I'm very glad to have it. One of the nice things about this orchid is that the flowers are just a little bit bigger than the normal dancing lady orchids and also that it's just that bit easier to cultivate to look after than the ordinary dancing lady orchids in my opinion anyway and this particular cultivar has a very very pretty and delicate scent now it's not the kind of thing that's going to waft around the room but if you come up and give it a sniff you're going to get it and it really is pretty so yes a delicate and subtle scent and anyone who has watched my orchid videos for any length of time will know that delicate and subtle aren't usually the adjectives that I look out for to describe my orchids. I much prefer something that's big and blousy and not subtle at all. So I guess without further ado, we're going to leave Oncidium honeybee, beautiful though she is, and move on to the next orchid in the Oncidium Alliance that I want to show you. And in keeping with the mellow yellow theme that I seem to have going on at the moment, and would you believe it? Yellow really isn't my favorite color, but I do have this beautiful Oncidium here. This beauty was bought as a seedling a mere four years ago and it has taken her a good long time to flower. Originally bought for my daughter, this one, well, this isn't its first flowering. It did flower earlier on this year. Two spikes, but each with only one or two flowers. 
Not very many, but now we finally have a decent spike. And I do really like this one, despite my aversion to many yellow flowers. This one reminds me of great things like the laburnum tree in full flower and nice, happy, sunny Easter childhood memories. As you can see, the petals have some markings on there, some striation, definitely an attractive feature. And that's carried through to the lip and the whole plant, in fact. It's a combination of a deep dark yellow and a much more gentle hue. We do have a bit of a beardy thing going on in here, underneath the nose. Not very pronounced, but definitely adding to the features of this pretty plant. And there it is in all its beauty. And I guess the good thing about having done YouTube for so long is that I have videos for when I got each of these plants. <laughs> So if I remember, I'll try and link to them at the end. So if you want to see the orchid fair where I bought this seedling Oncidium for my daughter, then you can check out that link. And well, yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next one. I bet you're dying for me to get on to the real beauty, but we have one more Oncidium to show you first. And here we have a gorgeous no ID with super deep red flowers. This one I bought three years ago from a supermarket here in Ireland. Again, I have the video and if you've been watching longer term, you'll have seen how this plant has progressed over that period of time. But now this, this is really my type of color combination. I like deep dark reds as well as the more bright, vibrant oranges. And this I think has a lot going on because not only do we have the curled dark red petals but we also have orange in there in the lip and then a fluffy pink bit down below. See what a pretty little thing it is and what I really love about it is the way that the edge of the petals is curled all the way around just adding that extra bit of a feature. A really really nice plant. And just another glance at the darkness of those petals. Now, obviously it's a very dull day today, so the light isn't great, but I do assure you that this one really does have a very deep dark color and it's not a trick of the camera. Okay, so I'm going to leave this Oncidium in frame for a minute, just so you can judge the size of the flowers on the next beauty I'm going to show you. Are you ready for this? This is good, here she comes. Can you see it yet? Can you get an idea of what we're talking about? And yes, 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 yes. Look at this monster. Look, at, well, it's not a monster in terms of the plant size, but the flower size. Oh my goodness. Compared to, whoops the ordinary sized plant here behind. These are enormous. And here she is in all her fantastic, fantastic glory. So this is a Rossio blossom, a primary cross between Grande and Splendens. And you can see that its main claim to fame has got to be the ginormous size of these flowers. Now this was really quite startling to me when I first saw this genus come into flower because you don't normally associate Oncidium types with having enormous flowers. And this of course is an Oncidium type. It's in that broad family. So originally known as Odontoglossum, this genus is now Rossia blossom. This genus is from Mexico down to Panama and the grande part of the parentage in this, the, uh, so basically Rossia blossom grande is known as the clown orchid and I think you can see why if you look at the markings in here. I have three flowers fully open, so the two that you see in front of you and one around the back. So 
So this is the plant from the back, oops, with this big, big flower there. And then just rotating it again because we get to, to see two flowers here at the front, which is obviously better. We can also see that there's a very exciting bud up there. And the way this bud is unfurling reminds me of so many beautiful things. The Gloriosa lily specifically, where you can see how it breaks open but leaves these chunks of light at the side in its quest to open fully. And I'm not quite sure how long this is going to take to open, but I'm enjoying it before it does. If we take a sneak peek in there, you can see the nose of the eventual flower already just poking, see it? And then of course the edge of the petals with those tiger-like markings, so gorgeous. Oh, can you see? The bud, the bottom petals have just opened there. Now I'm not going to try and manually open it at all because it never works out well when you do that. The petals can get just uh, an ungainly kink to them if they've been manually opened like that but perhaps by the time we finish this section we might see a little more of that enormous flower opening. In any case Odontoglossum or Rossia blossom as this plant is now gets a lot of bad press as being quite difficult to grow in one of our modern homes which are centrally heated. And in fact, you know, I've had this plant for five years, so I bought it as a seedling again at that orchid show that I visit annually. And I'll try and link to that uh, video at the end. But I bought it five years ago and it's taken this long to flower. This is its first flowering. So perhaps, perhaps that's as a result of the fact that my house is just a little bit too warm for it. Now, having said that, I do have a cooler house, but this plant, for example, in winter, needs 10 to 12 degrees at night. That's 50 to 55 Fahrenheit, which really is quite cool. And in summer, you know, it doesn't like to get too hot, so it needs 12 to 15 at night in summer, which is 55 to 60 Fahrenheit. So that can be quite tricky to accommodate. So perhaps the fact that I haven't done that is what has meant that this flower took so long to flower. But do you know what? I got there in the end and I'm so, so pleased with it. And when I originally bought this orchid, my friend Liga also bought one the same size and we had a little competition going on to see who could flower theirs first and she won she flowered hers a long time ago but I don't think she got as many flowers as I I do now so I'm pleased I'm definitely pleased you know what I'd be happy enough to just stay and look at this plant for the rest of the video and not show you anything else but I do know that there are a lot of you out there who are very interested in cattleyas so I'll tell you what let's go and see some cattleyas and so without further ado I proudly present to you Guariante Bauringana one of the heralds of autumn now this is a pink Guariante, although I must say it looks quite blue from the light that's being shined on it at the moment, so it's not very representative. But this year, as someone pointed out when I posted a photograph on my community page, I have seven buds, not six as I claimed, which of course is good. And these seven flowers are clustered on one spike. It is such a pretty thing. And I guess I've come to appreciate it more since I visited the Botanic Gardens in Kew in London last year and saw the lot of Guarianta that they had there that were just coming into flower at this time of year. And it just helped me appreciate what a fantastic herald they are to the Cattleya blooming season. So it kicks off with this one and hopefully we'll go on to great and wonderful things. Now Guariante of course is in the Cattleya Alliance and it was moved out of the Cattleya genus in 2003 to its own genus 
where there are just four species, Baranjana being one of the most representative of those. This whole group comes from Mexico to further south in America and produces these beautiful, beautiful plants. One of the distinguishing features of Guariante is its club-shaped pseudobulbs and that's what we're looking at here. The new growths are very distinctive in the way that they come up. But the downside to that, as far as I'm concerned, is that it can be quite difficult to get the sheaths off of the plant. They are more an integral part of the pseudobulbs for longer. Now, with this plant, it's very important that you don't bury it too deeply. And you can see here that there's a lot of root that just wants to sit proud of the earth and you need to let it. If you bury it too deeply, then the new pseudobulbs will rot. This plant was potted on earlier in the year, which you can see from the plastic coated string that's been used to make sure it sits firmly in its pot. And I've had the plant for four years. Now, as you can see, it's quite substantial, but I just have one spike in bloom which, I mean, it could be a better result, but I am happy with seven flowers. And on that note, I think what we'll do now is go to some other rooms in the house where I have a couple more cattleyas that I'd like to share with you, and we can have a look at those. And we have to come up here to the grow light, the Mars Hydra grow light, to see the next of my updates. And it's this gorgeous, little Cattleya and I am just going to show you this now beautiful orange orange flowers and it's its second flowering this year so I'm really really pleased with this this is the first thing to flower for me under this grow light and the plant seems to be doing well we do have two pseudobulbs at the back that are kind of shriveling but that happens and um, it's looking really well and just while we're in the neighborhood I'm putting that back just to show you my Persevilliana here which has two sheaths one and a second one in there and I do think I detect something inside them so I'm going to get two spikes in this plant this year which is great news just generally speaking, things are doing really quite well on this, under this grow light. Here's that lovely little plant I got earlier in the year with the yellow flowers, growing this enormous great big growth here at the front and sending down lots and lots of really good roots. So now we've moved into the sitting room where I want to give you an update on a couple of pretty orchids in bloom and you're seeing them there on the left. That yellowish one down below and the pink one up above. I also want to tell you what's been going on with some of the ones that I'm growing in here. And here we have my René Marquez cross. And you might well be forgiven for thinking that this is just René Marquez. It's not a cross with any other genus, but in fact it is. And the cross will be written up here on the screen. But what I absolutely, absolutely love about this plant is the, well, I like many things about it, but the splotchy pink markings that you see there on the lip and on the edges of the petals, just randomly placed. I think it's just a lovely touch. The splodges match perfectly in color to the main nose of the plant. And it just kind of, it's very symmetrical, even though I had said they're placed randomly. But let me show you a random one over here. On this third flower, there's a kind of blush of pink on this petal here. I don't know if the camera is really picking that up and it was certainly more pronounced earlier on when it opened. 
In fact, this spike is coming near the end of its flowering, so I just had to make sure I got it on film to show how glorious it is. Now, this is the second time this plant has flowered for me. The first time was shortly after I bought it, a year and a half ago, in the Schwerter Orchid Nursery in Germany, where I made an impromptu visit and picked myself up some pretty little things in the process. And I'm so glad I got my hands on this. As for the rest of the plant, I potted it on just um, a little while ago, I can't remember how long, and it's rewarding me with new growth. See that new growth over there? However, the rest of the plant, while growing well, is quite scruffy looking, and that's due to two things. This plant naturally, I believe, tends to have spotting on its leaves. But despite that, I had some spider mite on the plant after I got it and it had to be treated. I think now it's cured, but I will say one thing about spider mite. Given my eyesight, it is actually quite difficult for me to determine if I still have them or not. So this plant is living in isolation. Today it is mixed with other plants, but normally it lives on a windowsill. But today is all about the flowers and I think you'll agree they really are the most gorgeous things. Moving up from there we have the frag which I featured in my last video. And this one is growing strong, making consecutive flowers. If you look here you can see that obviously here we have a flower open but on the stem over here, that's where the last flower was and it has fallen. And here we have the new bud up above. So it's quite an interesting growing pattern and one that gives for longevity of flowering. It keeps going on and on. And one strange thing about this plant is that it drops the flower before it wilts. So some may look on this as an advantage because you don't end up with brown wilting blooms on your stalk that you need to cut off. Others might say that it's just a bit premature. And to the right we have one of my monstrous plants. <laughs> I don't know if you can see there, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot of pseudobulbs on this giant this plant is really tightly packed and I don't know but can you see over here that pseudobulb sticking out there? Well I will turn around if I can do so without knocking everything over just so you can see a bit more clearly what's going on. I had to cut a hole in the side of the pot to allow the pseudobulb some space to grow a little chunk has been taken out of the side. Now it's been two years since this was last potted on. If you recall, I potted it on when Dimitri was here and divided it even, but still it has just made such luscious, vigorous growth that I should be thinking about doing it again, but I wasn't prepared to do anything with it this year. So I've just, you know, <laughs> cheated really, given it a little bit more space to tide me over until next year. And we have flower spikes. See in there, that sheath? Well, that will be a flower, but we have bigger ones too. And over here we have the most advanced of the flower spikes, which is wending its way upwards. This plant flowered for me at Christmas last year. I remember so well because I'd just received a new phone with a good camera and I experimented with taking photographs of its blooms on Christmas Day. So maybe that's what it's gearing up to this year. And now let's have a look at this Phalaenopsis which is coming to the end of its flowering. Let's just position it properly here that we could have a proper look at it. We've got two flowers that are still looking really well and the ones at the back are gone over. But I really do like the markings in here on this small plant. Quite pretty and quite delicate, like somebody was cleaning off their paintbrush and just flicked it and all of those little dots of colour landed on the petals on this Phalaenopsis. Now luckily I took some footage of this plant when it was looking a bit more full in flower, so let's go and have a look at that now. 
and here we are in the kitchen where I want to show you this fabulous little fowl that's in glorious flower beside my big sobraria. I think you'll agree she is absolutely fabulous. Now this is a cross which I bought a year and a half ago when I visited the Schwerter nursery. Each flower has fabulous markings on the lip kind of yellow background with little pinprick dots and with the deep pink diffused into white I think it makes a fantastic addition to my collection. I have four flowers this year and this is the plant's second flowering I believe since I bought it so it's quite reliable and it has gorgeous leaves did I mention the fantastic leaves let's see if I can show you. I've moved it down here now to the counter where we can just have a look at the leaves a bit better and you can see when there's less sun on them how they really are very attractive. It's pushing up the newest leaf at the moment which is this one and I hope it's not fully formed because if it is that means it's much smaller than the other ones which is never a very good sign but I think generally speaking the plant is quite healthy and we have like healthy root tips here. The root tips are kind of red and green at the same time and for those who look out for these details a very attractive feature. And now I just want to give you a little update on my gongora which hangs here on a north facing window and as you can see it's been repotted this year into a much, much bigger pot. A clay pot, but it is potted in sphagnum. And it has produced so many flowers. Here's a spike here. As you can see, yet to open. And here are a couple that have gone. <laughs> and if we see over the other side of the plant, it's the same story. So this has had such a staggered flowering. It's been flowering for weeks and weeks and weeks, but never all at once. And I just adore when a plant has all of its flower blooms open at the same time. That's what I really love. Even if it's only for a short time, I just absolutely love this. Now at the moment we have this one spike in flower. They are very attractive kind of orangey yellow pendant spikes with a light scent. Very nice plant and very easy to grow too. And what I also love is the way that the spike has these curly bits. So we have the main spike here coming out of the plant and at each point where it's going to send out a flower it produces let me see if i can show you that curly bit there and the flower is at the end and all of those curly sub spikes i guess they really look quite attractive on the plant so there we have it my gongora an update one flower spike to show you at the moment but well it has had plenty and if you want to see this plant in full flower like it was last year where all the spikes flowered at the same time then I'll link to that video at the very end because it really was a spectacle. And that brings me to the end of this video, my orchid update video which I hope you enjoyed. And if so, give the video the thumbs up. And just a little reminder that if you're interested in growing cattleyas on a windowsill, then my e-booklet entitled My Windowsill Monsters is free to anybody who signs up to memberships in the near future. So hit that join button and see what perks you would be eligible for if you were to sign up to memberships now. Okay. In the meantime, I hope you're not having such a terrible storm as we are here in Ireland. And I guess I will see you on the next video. Bye.